little baby pure small He created you, he created us all Hush little baby don't you fear We're never alone when I'm asleep Hush little baby breathing so calm He'll protect us all and keep us from harm Hush little baby still and serene You are a Muslim Islam's your deen Hush little baby pure and small Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim In the name of Allah the most merciful the most compassionate Dear viewers everywhere I greet you with peace Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu this is your presenter, Dr. Mamdouh Muhammad, and uh, I am going to continue uh, talking about uh, how to make teaching effective in our classrooms. Uh, we discussed uh, five or six topics, subtopics related to this. Today, we are going to add one extra topic, which is uh, how to engage all students in the classroom engaging all students in classroom discussions and activities and before we step into this i'd like to remind you of the format that we followed from the beginning we take one quality of good teaching which is today is engaging all students and then we'll give some examples about it then we'll ask you to apply this on the islamic subjects and then we'll ask you the question how will you or what will you change in your classroom when you go there? Let's begin with this uh, engaging all students in the classroom. One benefit of this, of, or first of all, we've noticed that uh, many teachers in classrooms, they focus on specific students. They don't address all students. And uh, this has uh, some negatives in it. One of them is that some students are deprived from participating or from taking the same rights and one good quality of teachers is to be fair to all students even if they are naughty even if they are, don't do the assignment even they still have some rights upon you so you need to deal with them from this perspective so when you design a lesson or when you plan a lesson we need to have uh, this idea in our mind how to engage all students you see that when a teacher talks like me now is lecturing uh, students are not engaged. Just after a few minutes, you will find students are distracted. So this is another benefit. Because of the focus span of most people does not uh, last long. So unless you engage them in something, uh, they will lose focus on the lesson. So this is another thing. For example, I'll give you some ideas. When we teach reading, whether it's reading of the Quran, reading of poetry, reading of anything, one of the, the models that's used almost everywhere by many teachers is either the teacher would give a model reading and everybody is listening, then the teacher would ask a student to make another model reading and some teachers even forget themselves and let the student read the whole passage, the whole page. So try to imagine the situation, somebody is reading for six or seven minutes and all students are listening. So in a class of 30, one is doing the reading, one is practicing the skill of reading, the rest are practicing even, not even practicing the skill of listening, because if they are not asked about what did they understand, they wouldn't be focusing. So one is reading and the rest is listening. Then after seven minutes, another one is reading and the rest is listening. In other words, three or four students will be reading while all the others are listening. And this, of course, a waste of time. This is a waste of time. Because three or four people have practiced the skill of reading and the rest did not. We have to pay attention to this, even in the Quran. That's why we need to think of methods of engaging all students in reading. One method I told you that is you divide the students into rows. Each two rows in front of each other, depending on how your class designed so you can make two rows here and two rows here a b and a b 
So you would ask A to read. So all the students in row A are reading, and all the students in row B are listening. Okay? So they are reading the same thing with low voice, so that only the person in front of them would hear them. And so the act of the B is to correct A while they are reading. And the same thing, B here is correcting A. And you as a teacher, you can go between them, stop here, stop there, to correct whenever you find an error. Do you see what I'm saying? So now in the first five minutes, at least half of the students are reading and half are listening. And then after five minutes or six minutes, you reverse. So the B would be reading and the A would be correcting them. And again, you are passing in between the rows in order to make a correction. Do you see what I'm happening? Now, in 15 minutes, all students read. And this can be applied to Quran, can be applied to reading a comprehension passage or poem or anything to be read. So now all students in very short time exercised the skill of reading. Is this clear? Any comment about this? Okay. Another way, of course, of doing this, doing it in a different way, when you ask groups to read, you can assign the whole class to be in a circle, if you can do this. And then, let's say that we are reading Surah Al-A'la. Sabbah isma rabbika al-A'la. So after the teacher gives the model reading, right, or a student gives a model reading, all of them listen to a model reading from a tape or something, now the students start to repeat. And the teacher should not go in order. So he would start with students. I would start from the very beginning. سبح اسم ربك الأعلى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء and so on and so forth. You see what's happening now. The book is in front of you. The problem of going in order, right? This guy will sleep for 10 minutes until we reach him. So he's not focusing. So you have to surprise any one of them at any time. So sometimes here, sometimes here, here, right? And you find a naughty boy, right? So you, for example, the last one is a naughty boy, for example, right? So you ask him, right? And then you go here, and then you go back to him, and then you go here, and you go back to him. Never give him an opportunity to, to play, because you know that's his nature, right? So you try to keep him focused, because some students are not focusing. So this is one of the techniques. And we've seen in the places they, where they teach Quran, we call them in Egypt, uh, Kutab. You can see that uh, this is happening in Pakistan and India and many places. All the students are sitting in a circle, right? And each one of them is reading the same thing. And the teacher would go from here to listen to here, to listen to here. And here, when we link this with what we said yesterday, if you know your students well, so you know where you are going to stay longer time. So if you know that this student is not doing well, so you're going to stay with him longer time than when you sit with this one. You know that this is a very skillful student, so you're not going to stay with him long time. You see what I'm saying? So you move around them, and all of them are reading. All of them are reading at the same time. This is effective use of time. And we need to benefit from this. Based on this, we can introduce also one of the things that engage students is that when they do the presentation themselves, you have a listen and instead of you doing it, you've already arranged it with them, organized with them that they are going to present today. So the two students are doing the presentation and you go and move from one place into another. This will make the students all the time alert because you are moving, coming close to them asking them what did you understand from this. So, the more activities we have, the better in engaging students. And the rationale behind this again is effective use of time, helping students to focus on the lesson so that they can get the maximum amount of it. Okay, all games, all games are designed to help you engage students. I'll talk about some games now, and I hope you are, yes, ready to participate. It is also related to ilm al-hadith, to see that how difficult this ilm is. 
and the possibility of losing something is very possible when you listen to it one time and if you don't have good memory after you narrate it to other people down the road it will be lost or it will change and we will give an example we call this Addul Amanat ila ahliha give the amana to the people who deserve it right and I will do this simple exercise with you here I'll explain it and then after the break we'll do it I have a statement here as if it is a hadith right I'll say it in English I'll get two students one from here one from here right they are the only ones who would hear it from me and then after that I will withdraw back here and then the first student would come here to listen from the first student second student will come here to listen to the exactly now she uses her memory okay and then the first one would sit down the third one would come to listen from the second one and then the second one will sit down and then the fourth one will come right and so on until we reach two four six and at the same time we'll take six from here and we will see who is doing better, the boys or the girls. Okay? Is this clear? This is one example that you can keep the students involved in. Just an example. You can use it, as I said, that in Hadith, even in Quran, even in, in poetry, even in anything. And you're trying to develop the memory of the students. If we have uh, five minutes before the break, we can continue. We're almost in the break, so I hope you understood it. Is this clear for you? And this is one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you are the last one. When we finish, you and her, right? And she, she, you will say what you have heard, and you will say what you've heard, and we'll see how accurate the end result is. Is this clear? Okay, let's take a break now, and inshallah, we'll come back to apply this uh, small game Inshallah in the class. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Welcome back. Now it's time to apply the game that I explained it before the break. And now uh, I need uh, five people from here. You represent group number one and you represent group number two. I need the first person here and the first person here to come here I'll explain, I'll say the statement to them one time and then they know the rest. I hope you stand before, beside me here now at least and after that I will show you where to stand. Good? Here. Is Kalipantan in the south or Surabaya in the east? Is Kalipantan in the south or Surabaya in the east? Clear? Thank you. You stand here. And you stand here as he explained. Okay? A little bit here, a little bit here. Okay. Now, uh, student number two to come beside him, and student number two to come beside him. Yes, please stand in. Yes, if you do it quicker, that's better. Thank you. Done. Good. I need somebody to give them the microphones, the last two. It's over. It's over. It's over. Thank you. That's done. That's enough. This is just an example. Give me a microphone, please. Give him the microphone. Now I want you to write. I want you to write exactly what he, yeah, what he will say. Okay. This one. Okay. Speak up. The statement that which was told by Brother Abdul Rahman was, is Kaleem unto. Is Kaleem unto, that's what, write what he says. Unto, and Surah Bayina, from past six months. Okay. Thank you. Did you write it? Does it make sense to you? It doesn't make sense to me. Okay. 
Say what you have heard. Yes, my teammate, he said, is Kalibantan in south and is Surabaya in west? Is Kalimantan in south and is Surabaya in west? Okay, now I will read it for you and you see who is close to me. What I said, is Kalimantan in the south or Surabaya in the east? Totally different. Good. Thank you. Sit down. So, you can see how people change facts very quickly. Try to compare this with the situation of the Prophet وسلم, and the companions. One of them would hear the hadith today, and then after three or four days or one month or two months, he would say it to another companion. And after a year or two, right, it is said, mentioned to another one. And they still retain the hadith. And by the way, this is one of the wisdoms of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why he selected the Arabs, by the way, to be the carriers of the last religion. They used to have very good memory. They used to have very good memory. They have some bad aspects, of course, but they had very good memory. To the degree that if anybody would come here and try to give this lecture, he can give it in a poetic form. They were very eloquent in the language. Not only that, yet, while somebody is saying the poem, someone would interrupt him and would say that you made a mistake here. It didn't go with the rhythm of the rest. So they were so eloquent in the language and they had very, very strong memory. So anyway, so this is a kind of game you can make some competition similar to this. Other types of game, I will give you some. This is, one of them is note taking. You ask students yeah, to write notes. So you can ask them to listen to a lecture or to listen to you and ask them to take notes. And they take as many as possible, right? And then after that, you can check. Some people made notes and some people made many more than others. And some people didn't even take some notes that are wrong. And you can double check this, or you can cross, make cross-reference cross between them. You take what you wrote and give it to another one, and you take what you wrote to give it to another one, to see the, the accuracy of this. And this helps students gradually, so that when they join universities, they would be really accurate in taking the notes. Okay, another one is the concept, concept mapping. Yeah, I asked you to try to draw what you understood, to make a map of what you understand and understood. Especially if the lesson is complicated, for example, the different types of hadith, the different types of tafsir, any topic I think can be put in a map, in a mental map, right, or a concept map. And this way it helps you understand it. When I put something in front of you, I said that it's divided. Remember on the first day I said, when I talked about uh, distributive focus, can you tell me distributive focus it has what, how many elements? Three. three elements, you see it's very clear, right? One, two, three, can you put them in order? Knowledge. 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 Concepts. Concept. Skill. Skills. Very good. So it's very clear, very vivid now. So if you do this to any subject, to any lecture, it will help you a lot to visualize the lecture. And this is something that I did in my books even when I was teaching Arabic. And I made it and I hope we would have a chance to see this inshallah. Uh, in the coming few days, if you are going to attend the Arabic one. Another type of game you can apply to anything, especially seerah or hadith or even tafsir. Think of a personality. Say that now, I want you to think of a personality. I already have him in my mind. What you need to do, you ask me 10 questions, right? Until I tell you, yes, he is. So I have a personality that I'm thinking of right now. Any person in the world. Uh, to make it easy for you, I would say uh, he is a companion. Okay? So you need to ask me some questions. And all the questions should be a yes and no question. So I would say yes or no. So if yes, when I get yes, that means you won. Now I have a personality in my mind. You ask me some questions to know whether he is the one or not. Is it clear? Yes, go ahead. Was he the first Khalifa? No, go Was ahead. he a companion before Hijra or after Hijra? Uh, before Hijra. I'm not sure, but uh, no. So I would say no, this is not a good question. It should be yes or no question. 
Okay? It should be yes or no question. Is he a companion before Hijrah? Okay, yes. Okay. Is he among the Ashra Mubashra? No. Think of questions, huh? No. Anyway, huh? Is he a relative of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Yes, in a way. Yes, in a way. Huh? Was he known as the adopted son of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? No. Uh, was he her slave? In a way, yes. Was he the first person to give the adhan? No. Yeah, but these are the types of questions you expect. Ask until. Two more minutes. Anyway, when you pay, I say that uh, he's Salman al Farisi. Anyway, there's another thing. He said that today's topic is about Hijrah, a new topic. Today's topic is about global warming. Now, write in a list that you have some facts about this topic. Try to write some facts about this topic. Imagine some facts about this topic of global warming. Five or six facts, depending on your knowledge. The topic is about global warming. You know, this issue is uh, an emerging issue in the last few uh, years. Now, after you give them this opportunity, stop writing, please. So, uh, this, now you tell them that, listen to the lecture. And every time you find that the fact that you wrote is covered in the lecture, circle it, right? So now you have the list, it's in front of you. You listen to the lecture, whether it's said by the teacher or someone else, right? And then whenever you find one of the facts that you wrote is mentioned, you tick it. Okay, what's the purpose of this game? For the students to be attentive. To? To be very attentive when yeah, the lecture is going on. Yes, yeah, students need, you help them to be attentive. Yes, what else? Also to check on the uh, students' knowledge, whether they have any knowledge beforehand. Very good. On the topic also, that is being you taught. check whether students have knowledge or not. Student would be curious enough if his point is coming up or no. So he'll always pay attention as in he'll always, oh, he'll always, always pay attention. Engrossed. Also encouraging students to, to read more and more about topics so they don't want to be, yes, silent or inactive in the class. Anyway, but here, this is something very important to help students to focus. Students are like you. If I leave you without asking you to answer, you will sleep definitely. No, even if I am in your place, I will do the same thing. That's why we try to do different things so that we would be able to distract the sleeping from your eyes. Right. Okay. Any other benefit, do you think? It also helps them to know whether a particular idea matches. It may need not it may need not match with what they have written, but whether two points convey the same idea. Yes. Like it develops different presentation skills of the same concept. Yes, you're right. It also helps them. Whenever they listen to a topic, they will start focusing on facts. They will try to focus on facts all the time, right? Versus opinions. Okay. I think this is a sample of the games that would help students focus on the topic and uh, it will help you to engage as much as possible or as many as possible of the students so that they would understand, they get better understanding. This is the end of this episode. We'll continue in the coming one. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Little baby pure and small He created you, he created us all Hush little baby don't you fear We're never alone when Allah's so near Hush little baby breathing so calm He'll protect us all and keep us from harm Hush, little baby, still and serene You are a Muslim, Islam's your deen Hush, little baby, pure and small 